Hi, and welcome to Coding Corner with Miss Allison. Um, today I'm going to show you how to create a story using Scratch's programming language. Um, we're going to create a multi-character or sprites story uh, with some interaction by the reader, and we're going to include a couple of different backdrops um, that we can choose from. Um, it's important when you start this project to have an account first so you can save it and share it later, but also to think about the kind of story that you want to tell. Is it a spooky story? Is it going to be a space story like the one here in the background? Um, the, the choices are really endless. There's lots of different uh, backdrops and types of sprites for you to choose from. You could do a sports one if you wanted to, like the soccer one that I had. Um, so really, you're just going to be choosing your backdrop and your characters and thinking about the types of stories that you want to write. Are they adventures? Are they scary? Are they sad? I'm going to start by choosing um, my two sprites or characters. And for this, I'm choosing from the fantasy uh, theme. Um, I've decided I want sort of a magical sort of story. Uh, mine's going to be about someone's birthday and he thinks his friend has forgotten and then we'll see what happens. So I have my two sprites here. I'm just going to position them on my backdrop. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start building their conversation or their dialogue, okay? And that's going to help sort of tell the story. So we're going to start with a when flag is clicked block. Um, then we're going to head up to looks and we're going to pull out of say hello for two seconds block. Um, and we're going to do the same for our other character. Um, it's important when you're um, thinking about coding to um, think about um, things like sequencing or the order that things happen. So we have them both saying hello for two seconds. And when we click the flag, uh, we're going to see that um, they both talk at the same time. So it doesn't look like they're having a conversation. Um, I want to change that by adding some weight blocks. Um, so I'm going to just go over to controls and I'm going to add a weight block. And then I'm going to um, show you how that looks. So I'm going to wait two seconds so that the reader has time to read what is on the screen. So hello. Hello. So that's a, a little easier for the reader to read and it looks like they're having a, a conversation. So what I'm going to do is, is you can have your, your, your character say anything that you want. You just want to think about the kind of story that you're writing. Um, and you're just going to do that by stacking wait and say blocks. The conversation can be as long as you want or as short as you like. I'm going to build my conversation um, just off camera and then I'll come back and show you what I have come up with, okay? Okay, so here we have my conversation that I built. And as you can see, it's just a series of wait and say blocks. Um, I'm going to click on it just to show you. So. So we have Gobi who's wondering if this has something to do with his birthday. It looks like Tara has forgotten. I'm going to switch the order because I want to have for my story, I want to have Gobi at the back and Tara in the front. Also, um, we can see that, um, you know, Tara is facing the wrong way. So you're going to click on costumes and you could just flip his costume if you wanted to, by, but he has a costume that faces the other way. So I'm just going to select that one. Okay. So now he's facing the right way. I'm going to go to backdrops and choose my settings. For this, I'm going to choose three settings, just under fantasy, choose castle two. And I go back to the micro, the magnifying glass, choose castle three. And then my last setting is going to be again in fantasy and it's just woods. So now I have my three settings. Um, I can add them to my code now as I go. Um, so, what we're going to do now is we're going to head over to events and we are going to um, pull out a when space is clicked. I want to add some interaction for the reader. So we're going to be using um, the arrow keys to sort of control the way the sprites move. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to pull out a when X change X by 10 um, block. X is the left to right axis. So um, we're going to choose right, and that's going to be 10. I'm going to duplicate that. Then I'm going to choose left. I'm going to make that negative 10, um, and then that's going to move move them just across the screen. I'm going to do the same for Gobi. So again, that's an event block when space is pressed, and then a motion block uh, change X by 10. And I'm just going to duplicate that. And then I'm just going to change one to right and then one to left. When I do left, I have to put in negative 10 and that is going to allow my reader to control which way uh, the sprite goes and kind of makes the story a little bit more interactive. So there they go. They're moving back and forth across the stage or the backdrop um, just using the arrow keys. 
Um, now you'll notice that when they walk, they kind of face the same way. So what I want to do is I want to go up to looks and I want to change their costumes again. And this way they'll face um, the way that I want them to face. So when they are going left, they face left. When they're going right, they're going to face right. And we can see that that Gobi is doing that now. So I'm going to just go up to Terra and just do the same thing. So what I'm doing is I'm adding to that uh, when left arrow clicked. Uh, change X, I'm adding a looks to that. So when that happens, they're going to move 10 or negative 10, and they're also going to change their costumes based on the direction of the arrow key. So I'm just going to select the costume there, go back to code, get the drop down menu, and select it. Um, I'm going to add the other one to the left arrow, and we're going to see how that works. Oh, it looks like I might have got those mixed up. So what I'm going to do is just go and switch that real quick. Running your code like this is a really great way to find out where you've made mistakes. So let's see how that works. Okay, so now we have Gobi who, who doesn't change back. So we need to go over and code his right arrow um, so that when that is clicked, he changes his costume. Otherwise, it just stays. Okay, so that's perfect. Now I have them both facing the right way. So when they're walking, they're looking in the direction that they're walking. Okay, so now that we have that, we need to start thinking about um, what happens? Why do we have our, our characters being controlled right and left? And the idea that I had is that when one of the characters touches the edge of the backdrop, um, because the reader has moved them using the arrow keys, we're going to switch our backdrop. So we're going to just code this into one of our of our sprites, and that's going to be Gobi. We want a forever loop and then an if-then loop. Then we're going to go to Sensing, take out a touching mouse pointer, snap it in there, and then select Edge. Okay, now I just want to sort of position Gobi on the backdrop so that when we do uh, touch the edge, oops, i got to click back onto him, um, it, it sends him to a certain location. So I'm going to pull out an X, Y, uh, block. So now that I've uh, selected his location, um, I'm going to just go over to looks. I'm going to pull out a when backdrop switches and I'm going to select castle 2. Um, so if we touch the edge, the backdrop is going to change to castle 2. Gobi's going to have a certain spot to go to. And then we just want the script to stop. So we're going to go to control, pull out a stop all, and then click in, in the little arrow and, and select this script. Um, so that will stop this script from running. So if we touch another edge later on a different backdrop, it's not going to send us back to Castle 2. Um, now that we've got that, um, we can run the code. We have to remember the idea of sequencing. So um, the code has to run from top to bottom before it gets to the touching edge part. So if we move over there now, you see they're still talking. They're not quite done their dialogue yet. So the code hasn't quite reached the part where it runs the edge touch. So we'll have to wait until that's all finished and then it'll switch it for us. Okay, so now we've switched over to our castle two. We can see that Gobi had his spot to go to, but Terra doesn't have a spot because we didn't code one for him. So now for, for Terra, we're gonna code uh, a new event. When we switch backdrops, it's like adding a new event. So we can do um, when backdrop switches to castle two as a new event. Um, then we can actually drag out Terra and put him on the on the back background as to where we want him, and then go up to motion, pull out a um, go to X Y block, and this will make sure that when the backdrop does switch over, he goes to the right spot on the backdrop. Now that we've um, got that coded, um, we can um, go over to um, sp sprites because um, we're going to add another sprite. This is going to act like an object in our in our story. So we're going to go to Fantasy and we're going to choose the key. And we're just going to pull the key where we want them on the backdrop. Um, and then we are going to code the key. So since we've added the key, um, it's added it to the entire code. Um, we will only want the key to show up um, when we switch over to the castle backdrop. So we're going to get a when flag is click block and then we are going to drag out a hide. So this means that when we click the flag, it's going to hide the key, and then we're going to pull out a when backdrop switches block, and we're going to choose castle two. We are going to go back up to looks and select a show block. 
this is going to make the key appear when that backdrop appears. Um, and then we're going to add a set size to 100% because later in the code we're going to be changing the size of the key to sort of animate it. What we're going to do now is we're going to head back up to looks and we're going to pull out a say block and we're going to just type in something that the key is going to say. I'm going to have it say, I'm a magic key, touch me to make a wish. And I'm going to have him say that just for the two seconds. And then I'm going to add a loop from control. So we're going to head over to control. We're going to pull out a repeat 10 loop. But we're going to change the number 10 to 3. So this will repeat the code in it three times. Um, then we're going to head up to sound. Um, and we're going to click on sounds up top there to open and then open the sound library by clicking on the icon in the bottom. We're going to head over to effects, scroll down, and I'm going to choose the magic spell. So I'm going to add that to my, to my code by pulling out a play magic spell sound until done and sticking that in my loop. Then I'm going to go down to looks, and I'm going to um, choose a change size. So that's up in, up in looks. And I'm going to change the size of my of my wand. I had mentioned earlier that we were going to change it. This is just going to make it a little bit more animated, so it's going to really stand out and kind of grow. Um, so I'm going to add that change by 30, and then I'm going to put in a weight block. You could also change it again, um, sort of to make it pulse or to, to, to make it seem a little bit more magical. Um, now I'm going to pull out a forever loop. And in that loop, I'm going to put in a if-then loop. So if touching so we're up to sensing if touching uh, mouse pointer we're going to click in there and just choose Terra um, then we're going to go back up to looks and we are going to select a um, switch backdrop to castle 3 okay so now that we have that um, we can try clicking on the flag and seeing sort of what happens it's a good idea to test your, your code by running it, so then you can see what you've done wrong. So I can see that the, the key has been hidden, but I guess I must have forgotten to code in the starting point uh, for our sprite. So I'm going to click on Terra, and I'm going to go to the when flag is clicked block stack, and I'm going to add some, some blocks to that to sort of set our starting point. So this is kind of like the beginning of our story. I want the sprites to go to the beginning of the story whenever the flag is clicked. So I'm going to choose the costume that I want, I think, which is Terra B. Um, then when the flag is clicked, I also want to have a certain backdrop. So I'm going to put that in. I'm going to switch backdrop to woods, since that was the original backdrop that we wanted. And then I'm also going to go up to motion, and I'm going to pull out an XY block so that I can set their starting position. Okay? So I've done that for Terra. I'm just going to go to go, go B and do the exact same thing. So I'm heading into looks. I'm pulling out a switch backdrop, making it woods. Um, and then I will also um, go up to motion and pull out an XY block. So that will be the starting point for our story. That's where it's going to start. Um, do I need to change his costume? Let's just click in there and see. No, I think that, that, that he's fine. So now that we have that, I'm going to click on the flag and we're going to see what happens. So the backdrop changes and the key has been hidden. Um, they're going to just work through their dialogue there. Um, I'm going to start thinking about um, what happens when we switch over to the castle to backdrop. So I'm going to click over to events and I'm going to start building the code for that event. So we're going to go over to events. When backdrop switches, we're going to choose our backdrop castle 2. Um, and then we're going to um, consider um, how long the key takes to, to do its code. So I'm going to put a wait block in there of about six seconds because I think that should be long enough. And then I'm going to go up to looks and pull out a say for two seconds block. And I'm just going to type in there something really quick. When you're doing this at home, you can take your time to work on your dialogue. I just want to get this done quick for the video. And it's going to say, should we touch the key? Um, <clears throat> now that I've done that, I'm going to head over to, to Terra. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull out a when backdrop switches to castle 2. I'm going to add a wait block of, I think, 11 seconds should do it. I'm going to have a, a go to um, spot. So he's going to go to, 
a certain spot when that happens. We've got a wait block of 10 seconds. And then I'm going to go up to looks and have him say, I want him to invite the reader to press the key so they can move across that screen and touch the key. So that's what I'm going to have him say. I'm going to have him say, say yes, please press the right arrow key. And that will hopefully entice our readers to use the keys to move across the screen. Um, now that I've done that, I'm going to move across this screen and we'll head over to the um, Castle 2 backdrop and see how that turns out. So we've switched over. Um, we can see the key now has appeared. You're not going to hear the sound on this, but if you do listen to the project through the link, you'll see that. So we've added some dialogue there. Should we touch the key? Yes, let's touch it. Let's see what happens when Tara touches the key by using the arrow. And now we move to our third backdrop. Okay, so now we're in Castle 3. You'll notice that the key is still here because we haven't hidden it. So we're going to go over to Events. We're clicking on the key because that's who we're coding. We're going to pull out a when backdrop switches to Castle 3. Then we're going to go up to Looks and we're going to hide the key because we don't want the key to show up on this backdrop. Um, it was just a porthole to this place. So now that we've hidden the key, kind of disappears. We're going to go over to Sprites and choose one more last sprite. Um, so we're just going to click on the magnifying glass, open up our sprite library, and we're going to scroll down to the cake because this is a birthday story. Now we've added our cake to our backdrop. We are just going to pull out a when flag is clicked for our cake, um, and then a couple of event blocks so we can hide this just like we hid um, the key. So we're going to pull out a show and hide. So when flag is clicked, we're hiding. When backdrop changes, we're hiding, and then we're showing it. So flag is clicked, we're hiding. Backdrop to two, castle two, we're hiding. And then also when it's castle three, we're showing. Okay, so that means um, the cake is only going to appear on this backdrop. So we're going to put our cake and position him where we want him on our backdrop. Now I can see another error, and this is totally normal when you're building code, you're going to make mistakes all the time, but we can see where Tara is still saying something. So when I, I, I pulled out the wrong block, I pulled out a say block, which will show up forever, um, and what I really wanted was a say for two seconds block. So we're going to go up, pull out the say for two seconds block, and we're just going to change that out, okay? So we're going to put yes, press the right key. Um, and then that way it won't stay up on the screen the whole time. We really only want that up there for a few seconds. Okay, so now we've fixed that mistake. Um, we can um, position our uh, sprites on our backdrop here by hooding over to events. Um, so this is Terra. So when backdrop switches to Castle 3, we are going to put him somewhere. Um, so his location I think is pretty good where it is. So we're just going to go over to motion pull out an XY block. Um, so that will set his location there. Um, we're also going to go up to looks because we're going to have him say something. So he's going to say something else now. Um, he's going to say, um, I wish you a happy birthday, Gobi. Okay, so that's his wish for touching the key is he's wishing Gobi a happy birthday since he remembered it was his birthday the whole time. And this is part of his present to Gobi. Okay, so that's what he's going to say. Well, actually, let's add a surprise to this, like this was his surprise the whole time. So surprise, I wish you a happy birthday. Gobi is what we'll have him say, okay? Then we're going to go over to Gobi, and we're going to code what happens when the backdrop changes for him, okay? So I'm going to move him. Um, I'm also going to go up to events, pull out a when backdrop switches block, change that to castle 3, okay? So this is the code block for castle 3. Um, then I'm going to head up to... Um, motion. I'm going to pull out a go to XY so we can choose where he goes to. Then I'm going to pull out um, a switch costume because he seems to be facing the wrong way. So when it changes over to that, I want him to face Tara. So I'm going to change his costume. Then I'm going to get him to say um, to say something. But first I'm going to add my, my weight block. So I know that Tara is going to be talking first, so if I get him to say something right away, they're just going to be talking at the same time. So I'm going to build in about a three second wait in that, and then I'm going to get Gobi to say, um, this is the best birthday, the best birthday ever. Okay, so that's their dialogue there, okay? Um, and he's just going to say that for two seconds, okay? And now we're all done, I'm going to open it up to the big screen.
Um, and we're going to try clicking the flag and see what happens. So perfect, we head back to the first setting. Everything's hidden. Their dialogue seems to be going pretty well. Remember, you can always click on the link that's provided to this and open up the code, and then you can see how I did stuff if you didn't follow it in the, in the video. So now we're at our point where we're getting the, um, the reader involved by asking them to choose. They're choosing it, so I'm pushing the arrow key to the, to the right to move our sprites. We're going to touch the edge and see what happens. Perfect. So we touched the edge. We changed over to Castle 2. You're not going to hear the music because my, my microphone doesn't pick that up, but, but please, be, please know that it is making its noise um, and growing. So now we're going to go over and touch the key and see what happens. All right, perfect. So we're into the, um, the last setting, Castle 3. Um, and that is the end of the story. This would be a great thing. You could also add, say, another sprite um, and make like a choose your own adventure or something like that. But um, I hope you enjoyed the uh, storytelling with Scratch. I hope it gave you some ideas on how you can create your own interactive story um, using Scratch. And um, thanks for stopping by.